Warning, this video does contain serious waffle. You have been warned. <laughs> Welcome to MAFTI UK. So what time will you be back later? I'll Ooh, okay. I know for a fact that I'm not the only one who's thinking, thank goodness we're allowed back on the bank. And that's what I'm gonna call this video, Back on the Bank. Where am I? I'm back at Clearwater, but I'm on Kent's Bank. Why am I fishing Kent's Bank? That's purely and simply because, just like me, every other fisherman wants to get back out and enjoy themselves on the bank. And we haven't been able to, and this place, this complex, is full. I can't believe my luck. I've just pulled up and I have seen two fish top right out in front of me, three rod lanes out. I'm in pegs 10 and 11. There doesn't appear to be anybody else here, but the other side of the bank is completely full. Now, I have just seen two fish top, so I'm gonna put zigs out. And I'm quite chuffed that they're in front of me at the moment. So, welcome back to MAFT UK. I'm absolutely over the moon to be back out onto the bank and join me for a, a short 24 hour session. I didn't think I was gonna get on. This is a bit of a bonus session for me. So let's get cracking. I haven't, I've only just arrived. I think it's somewhat like about half past 11. Uh, I'm going to set up my kit it, there is a chance of rain, so I'm going to get my bivvy up first. Then I'm going to sort some zigs out, and then I'm going to be fishing. So join me, and welcome. Cheers. There are fish right out in front of me, cruising with the backs on the surface of the water. I've just watched two of them. If I don't do zigs, I'm insane. So what have I got this weekend? What, what bait am I using? Well, first I'm using Ghost Dance at a Pale L, um, and then I'm gonna move on to um, some IPAs. And then later, uh, if I don't have any joy with that, I'm gonna move on to probably a bit of bourbon, and uh, as the night gets later, maybe even uh, a coffee with a bourbon in and see how that goes. So that's the bait I'm going to be using over the next 24 hours. Um, when it comes to fishing, uh, <laughs> um, hinders, and it's going to be some uh, beaten anna boilies. I've got some supreme cream and various pop-ups and wafters but uh, as you could see well as I could see not what you could see the fish are actually up high at the moment so for the definitely for the first session for the first part of the session I'm gonna put two zigs on 
but I am going to go over there and bait up underneath a bush and get uh, a few boilies and a few supreme creams and a bit of sweet corn. I've got some sweet corn as well, good old cheap old sweet corn. I'm going to put that underneath there. There is a swan on here and if he finds it I will get swanned out but it, I think it's worth the risk because it is, it is a shallow little bay in this corner and I think that's what I'm going to do. Should that fail, uh, I will then leave one down deep in there, in, in the hole in front of me, and then I'll probably put two along the bank there. Thinking on my feet, I will probably at night put two in the margins over there and drop one right underneath my rod, and then uh, again in the morning bring put the zigs back out. I think that's my tactic, that's how I'm going to play it. I don't know this pond very well. I have fished it before, but I have actually had one fish out. So this is not a blanking lake for me. It's not like my nemesis, just a few hundred meters away, Kellett. Uh, just so as you're aware, the lads and I are intending to book a lake exclusive again. So that's uh, Chris Fennel, Carp King 71, um, and a few other lads that we normally fish with. We missed out on the summer social. Well, I missed out on this, this year's summer social and we're, we're going to try again. We're going to go for another one later in the year. So there we go. What else have I come, got coming up over the next few months? If you follow my channel, you will know I've got my rifle. I've got to get out and use that. Um, I could have done that this weekend, to be honest. I, I was in two minds what I was going to do. So I decided to come fishing because it's just a little bit too windy for me to set up my rifle from scratch. I want it per I want the conditions perfect for it to be perfect. So perhaps that's a little bit silly of me, but that's that's the way it's going to be. So I sacrificed my uh, rifle. Didn't want to go hammocking just yet. Uh, I just thought that what I really want to do is get back out onto the bank and, and here I am. So let's waffle. Let's get set up. Let's get my rods out. Catch you guys in it. So I'll see, I'll see when I'm sorted. But I must admit, I've been on the wagon for three weeks. I've not had a single drop of alcohol for three weeks. And I'm really enjoying this. I drank so much over the lockdown period, it's unbelievable. I mean, the, the clanging of the bottles bin when it, when it was taken away was just awful. I have never drunk so much ever in my entire life. So I just put myself on a wagon and said to my better half that I will not drink at home but when I go fishing or out and about then I'll, I'm going to have a few. So I'm going to have a few this weekend or at least tonight anyhow. And that is absolutely lovely. Well, after three weeks without a beer, that is lovely. All my alcohol purchased this weekend is from Aldi. It is very different stuff. That's, it. That's a parallel. I've got some IPAs to try. They do have some secret little surprises, Aldi. You, you keep your eye out, really. I definitely got a drink with me, some cider, which I know the fennel will really like. I know I'll really like it. So I'm going to try that for you, Chris. In the meantime, let's crack on. Eight wraps. So there we go, that should match what I've thrown in over on the bank there. The swans have been over onto it, but they won't get the deeper stuff. So we've got a uh, bottom bait, and that's going to be a beaten anna, and then we've got a little mini wafter on the end there to look like the corn. So hopefully that might get anything cruising around later. I'm just going to lob this out now. It, it works out at eight wraps. Um, it's eight wraps to the distance that I've got my pegs, so it's not a standard eight wraps, it's a, a mini eight wraps, if that makes any sense. So if you, my, my sticks are just over there, they're not the full rod apart, but it makes no difference for this one session. Whatever's relevant to this session is relevant to those pegs. So it's eight wraps to those, 
to over the far bank there and then it's nine wraps to where the fish were surfacing and still are surfacing over there. number one. Just a quick note, whoever fished peg 10 last on uh, Kent's Bank, um, please do remember to take your used bait home with you next time. You've left all your pop-ups and boilies all over the place around the floor. All right, take your litter with you. So here we go, Alska. I was told I think it means love, lovely, something like that, Alska, lovely. Swedish or Swiss or something like that. Um, this one is a raspberry, wild strawberry and elderflower. Premium cider. Now again this is from Aldi. It is quite expensive. It's not cheap this stuff. It's about four quid for four. It's a pound of tin that. So, but I will say, although I haven't tried this particular flavour, I'm pretty confident that it's going to be nice because everyone I've tried of these so far have been fine. And I'm absolutely right. Yeah, that's a terrific, terrific cider. Very sweet. I did say that Chris Fennell would absolutely love that because he, he has a bit of a sweet tooth, does Chris, and he would absolutely love that. So if you are watching, buddy, there you go. Try that one. I know you'll like it. It's just a bit, a bit expensive, really. So how are you? It's been hectic, hasn't it? I mean, first of all, we all have to stay in. So we stay in. And then, everybody's out rioting now. What the fuck's going on? <laughs> in the margins, just surfaced. That would be really good news if that's the case. I'm just waiting for the coop to come back up to see if, if it, just in case it was a coop, but it's not, it's not, come, there's nothing come back up, there's no cormorants. That was a fish with its back out of its water. 10 meters from where I've got my bait, but it does show they're on the edge of the wind and they're going up and down that margin. Now that's a real good sign for me because that's where I've got my first rod. Up against the margin, on the end of the wind. So all food will be drifting across into that bank. And I have just seen a fish there. So I've got two zigs, one at 10 foot, got one at 12 foot, and the other one is, like I say, bottom baits, amongst all the um, bait that I put out for it, freebies. It's a, good, it's a good sign. There's definitely fish in this neck of the woods, which is I'm really, really pleased about. Anyway, where was he? Oh yeah, people writing. What on earth? Um, I will never ever be political or try and get my point across when it comes to stuff like that on this channel. I'm just not going to do it. So uh, I would simply say it's, it, it's a bizarre world that we live in right now, and and, uh, and, I'm, and I don't like it personally. But there you go. And that's as much as I'll say on it. This is neither the time or the place or the platform for that sort of nonsense. <sighs> Can't tell you how glad I am to be out. Even being at home, I was doing my extension, as you've seen at the beginning of the video. It was 
It's been hard work, I don't mind doing it, but it's been constant. I hope you're well. I hope uh, you haven't known anybody who's been ill or uh, uh, you've lost anyone due to the Covid thing. I personally don't know anybody who has. I don't know anyone that has. All people at work, my friends and family, they, they, I, we, don't, we don't know anybody that has. So where all this 60,000 people have come from, I genuinely don't know. I, mean, I don't know anybody. You may well do, and if that's the case, then I'm really sorry for your loss, but uh, I personally don't. I don't know. That hasn't made me blasé about the whole thing, it's just, I, I was a good boy, I did what I was told. Did you? Did you? I guess some of us went out and bought beer, and bits and bobs, which wasn't essential. But that depends on your point of view, doesn't it? <laughs> there were some people that went out and got really fit. Some people went out and got really fat. But uh, there you go. That's just the way life is. Uh, my daughter came home the minute they screamed coronavirus. And she's still with us. <laughs> I need a crowbar to get her out of the house now. So, yep. Uh, but it's been a... It's been a really bizarre year so far. Really bizarre. Yeah. Yeah, let's just hope everybody's well. I, I've actually gone over 4,000 subscribers now. It was 4,200, I think. 4,200 subscribers. I didn't do a giveaway for 4,000. 4, I thought... I, ooh, that was tight. I thought what I would do is wait till the 5,000 and have a good a, a good giveaway then. Am I being a bit presumptuous at 5,000? <laughs> anyway, I am going to relax now. I'm going to sit back, enjoy what sun I've got. Probably got a good half an hour of sunlight, and I am I mean without cloud, and, and I'm going to enjoy it. So there you go. It's great to be back, by the way. It's great to be back. I'm loving it. I don't care if I blank. I genuinely don't give a hoot. <sighs> Ooh! Carp tax video. That got some good hits, didn't it? Some good comments on that. Some people really passionate about the equipment. And I don't mind that at all. Some people really passionate about the comments. And, and that's, that's cool. Uh, I, I really enjoyed the, the, the kickbacks and the conversations I was having with people trying to explain my point of view and they were getting theirs across as well. But carp tax is a huge, huge subject and the comments I liked were you should do one on clothing, you should do one on this. And you're absolutely right because everything's all marked up isn't it, it's all marked up. But, but I will say this, I will say this, some people didn't quite get the ironic Ironicy, ironic situation, because I purposely placed certain items like Ridge Monkey, uh, Nash, Fox. Those things were purposely focused. Because I'm no different than anybody else. I fall for it too. I do exactly the same. I've got the the reels, the rods, the bags, the this, the that, and I've got it too. We all have. It's it's the nature of the beast. So, although I was saying how wrong it is, I'm also saying I'm, I'm, I do it too. So, so some people didn't notice it. Some people sort of went, "Oh yeah, well you bought this and you bought that." Yeah, no, I showed it to you. <laughs> I wasn't hiding the fact. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good video of that, that was really good, I, I enjoyed doing that one, that got some good hits and there was some good banter on that one, so if you commented on that, I'd like to say thank you very much, because there was a lot of comments, a lot of hits, there was a few thumbs down, but when you look at the total amount of hits, the likes compared to the thumbs down, they're insignificant, so, um, and every time somebody thumbs down anyhow, it, it marks the video up so people can, it, it puts it in the public eye more anyhow, so, the best thing you can do is actually, or the worst thing you can do from anybody's channel is is watch it and, and just go on to the next one. If you give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down, it adds to the 
viewing ability here. Oh, I can't remember the exact words, but you do me a favor, up or down. So, so uh, it was good, good, good video that. I enjoyed that one. I did a hammock video too, uh, which was a good one. I enjoyed that one. But they are those those camping videos and the hammocking videos. They don't get anywhere near as many hits as the fishing ones do. But I, 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 I'm still passionate about all of it. So it, it's not that I'm gonna I'm not gonna stop doing those because they're important to me. It's who I am. This this channel is who I am. This is what I do, and that's why I'm talking to you now. Because it's not, I'm, it's not a rig clinic. I'm not showing you all my gear. I'm not showing you this. I'm not showing you that. I'm not showing you how I make stuff. I'm just waffling. I'm just sat here waffling, drinking a beer, and and that's that's it. And hopefully catching fish. <laughs> Literally, as soon as I turn the camera, one showed right on my spot, right where my bait is. So they've moved from the along the bank, they are moving along the bank. If he goes down just a couple of feet of water, he's going to find my bait and all the freebies that I've put out for it. Come on! This would be awesome for pulling out in the first couple hours. Oh, there's one over there! Oh, that, I don't know if that came on the camera. They're up against that bank 100%. Come on! I have to be careful with the radio in the background. And they may pick up some music, and if it picks up the music, it'll get me a copyright strike. So I have to be careful when I upload this video to make sure I don't get a copyright strike. That was right out of the water. It was right out of the water. Near that duck there, right in front of us, see? Right in front of us. There you go. I told you they're in here. That one was just here. First beep, that is on my centre rod zig at 15 feet. Oh, sorry, 12 foot zig that. And I've got bat legs on, remember that. Now these aren't the most sensitive alarms either, so it takes quite a bit to actually set that alarm to, to make it move. And that was, looks like a wee bit of a backdrop on that one. You know what? It's quite exciting. You can tell in my voice that I'm really excited that I'm, that I'm seeing fish all over the place where I'm fishing. And I've just had my first beat. And I don't know whether I've just been had. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, I am quite excited. It's quite sad, isn't it? <laughs> well, perhaps that's why I'm a fisherman. Fucking unbelievable. He's done it again. As soon as I turn the camera around, they're only very, some of them are very subtle. Backs out of the water, fin comes out, back down again. But that one was right on my spot. That's where I put some bait in. I put a few in as well, so it was good 20, 30 boilies, and then good 20, 30 um, uh, supreme cream. So I've got white, yellow, and flavoring with the, with the boilies in that area. So if they, if they start feeding in that zone, then they, sh they should keep them there a little while and that's why I've done what I've done with the bottom bait and the, the wafter. That, that's why I've done what I've done. 
a sort of match the bait that's on the floor sort of thing. I could have used a <sighs> bloody hell. I could have used. I need to calm down. I, I could have used uh, a sweet corn on the end of it, but I just wanted to use a wafter just to make it a little bit better balanced. You know, more critically balanced, balanced sort of thing. You hear people say that all the time, don't you? Right. Anyway, lamps. I was talking about. Yeah, I looked at all various different types. I looked at something which is a bit more appropriate for me. So what did I end up with? Well, I ended up with the uh, Goal Zero. And it's this lamp here. And it's a, a tricky little lamp, really. It has, in the base, a battery, which is a uh, chargeable, rechargeable battery. This thing can also charge your phone via this USB port. It has its own connector. for recharging so you just plug that into your power pack and you charge your lamp up now you don't have to have an expensive power pack I've got a solar panel uh, battery pack which is charging up here and you can see the little green light maybe you see the little green light at the top there that tells me it's charging it's not full bright sunlight but we are in um, ideal charge time right now so you can charge this on the bank during the day when you can also it lasts for 500 hours on its basic turn light so you get half a light turn it on and then you get 500 hours so you can quite easily have this thing just ticking over all night so when like a candle and when you wake up in the night you're not fumbling around in the dark looking for stuff you've already got this um, backlight going on how does it work well this is not, isn't the ideal place to uh, show you but I will I'll try as soon as you turn it on you will get the LEDs to light up and tell you and then you can see there the, the the frame rate is flashing through I don't know if you can see that but I can see it on the camera and, and you it's 50-50 you turn it up, there you go, look, half a light. Now it's not 500 hours, but when you first turn it on, that is, but the camera will not see that properly. Now you can turn it the other way, and you can get a full light on it. So there you go. It's quite interesting how that does that, isn't it? I don't know if, let's see how that, the frequency of the light affects the camera. It has a stand so you can get high, that stand folds in, it has a hook so you can hang it and there is on the bottom a magnet and that magnet also means that you can hang it vertically on the side of a vehicle or, or something else, maybe it will be steady on your bivvy table, I don't know. It's not necessarily a fishing lamp, it is an all-purpose lamp you can have it keep it in your car and it's good for all sorts and you can charge it in your car too on a USB port so there you are that's that's my new lamp uh, how much did I pay for that 53 pound it's quite a lot when you consider the other lamp was 18 pound but it's quite tricky there's also a loop there for tying on hanging bits of string that sort of thing but I do like it it's okay um, be warning though this is the older version the newer version doesn't come with a battery now then, why didn't I get the newer version? Well, that battery can be replaced. So when the battery is charged X amount of times, you can uh, take that battery, throw it away, buy a new battery, and then you can recharge that one. And your torch is still usable, unlike the ones with the built-in battery. Once, it's, once the inner cell is degraded to a point that's no longer usable, then your torch is pretty much your lamp is pretty much gone too so that is my latest requisition i've also uh purchased a small little table like a bivy table but much much lower down for my hiking as well i've got one of those and i haven't bought a tent or, or a new bivy or new rods or new reels or new barrows or anything else like that i've, I've kept sort of expenditure in the low brackets With the amount of action that's going on in this corner here, I've got to bring one of those zigs in 
put it on a short zig and try it. I, I can't ignore it. This is a PVA. Yeah. There we go. I've gone for that. But I, c I can't ignore it. There's just too much going on in there. So I've got to, got to get one over in that corner. So I've just come round, there's my bivvy over there. Just bait it up along this margin. I brought a zig in, right in the middle there. So I've got a bottom bait just in front of this tree. I've got a zig right in the middle there. And I've still got a zig deep water out over there. But there's that much action going on in here now. I'd, I'd be foolish not to. So I need to get away from it to bring them back in again. So I need to get away from this corner. Yep, some of the astute amongst you would have realised that the cougar is gone. And now I've got a daisy of duster for my fishing car. More about that later. You won't be able to see it. But my bait is about there. About six inches, seven inches under the surface. And it's a risk I'll take because the swans will find that if they come back uh, so yeah, that's a chance you take I've had to change tactics I did have a plan but it's not working um, as I said earlier I was gonna start with my baiting strategy for myself was you know start with a pale hour move on to some IPAs and then later on this evening jump into a bourbon or two but I think the problem is with that is I sort of jumped the gun a little bit so I may just go straight into the bourbon now um, you've got to keep trying these things you never know <laughs> and that's terrific bourbon and it's only the cheap stuff from Aldi it's all right was it Samuel Samuel Joe's and no I'm not gonna drink all that no I probably wouldn't get anywhere near any near through it anyhow not having a drink for three weeks <laughs> so a quick update where am I generally fishing okay <laughs> right I've brought one of my longer zigs in and I've put it in the middle can't see him. Um, I put it over there because they are all in that corner now. I've been over and had a nosy but as you sin but no. Right car I did mention about the car. Why have I got a Dacia Duster and what's happened to my Ford Cougar? Well my Ford Cougar was a company car and uh, although it was a very nice car and I really really loved it uh, I can't afford to buy a brand new uh, Ford Cougar so the new company that I work for they offer company cars and they offer uh, a cash incentive so you can either have a car or you can have the cash um, not at once but on a monthly rotation so between cars between company vehicles I got that one and it's a 4x4 and it fits my fishing gear in perfect I, I, I quite like it in fact I do like the Dacia Duster and now I'm in a bit of a dilemma really because 
I have to have, a, I, I get a company car allowance. I don't want the company car that they supply because it's an Vauxhall Astra or nothing. Now, I don't necessarily have a problem with Vo Vauxhall Astras. It's just, that's not what I want. I either want big Ford Cougar car, or with a huge engine in it, or I want something else. And I don't want a Vauxhall Astra. So I bought that to get me from A to B until then. And it's going all the way to bloody Liverpool and back every day because I ain't going on the train at the moment. I don't know. I'm I'm quite liking. I might keep that. And this sounds awful, but it, it isn't. I, I might keep that because I might just use that for my fishing and camping and hiking trips. And then buy myself a Ford Focus. A 1.5 with the 182 horsepower, is it? Pokey little thing. You know, gets up and down the motorway pretty quick. I might have one of them. Uh, I've got about four months before I need to buy another car because my car I've got at the moment will be uh, oh, coming up seven years old and you can't have company car allowance if your vehicle's over seven years. So I have to buy a new one. So I might get one of them. But if I get a small focus, I won't be able to get my gear in it so much. That's why I make it both. It's quite expensive. It's you know, it's like a few hundred quid extra on insurance, and you got your MOTs and everything to do as well. But they're pretty simple engines, and you can maintain them. I've put timing belt. I've just changed on it. The brakes are in good nick. The tyres are okay at the moment. There's uh, I've had front bearings done on both front so I may keep it just run it into the ground forever and ever amen don't know over there there you are they're still there in that corner which is really good news uh, yeah so <laughs> that's where I am with the car thing I don't know so you might see me chug up chugging around in my little uh, white Dacia duster for some time to come uh, but yeah I, but my work car will be a nippy little Ford Focus and they're supposedly quite good to drive. I think I've had one. Was it a Ford Escort? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really a car person. I just I just want I just fancy the Ford Focus and nippy aren't they? That one the one I'm looking at is very fast. There is a faster one but uh, no, a bit too fast for me. I'm not really a boy racer anymore. <laughs> This psoriasis isn't getting any better. You've probably noticed it all over my arms. I have psoriasis, nothing I can do about it. You can wash and moisturize. I did this morning, washed it all down and moisturized it, but it all, in the sun and heat, it just dries up again. Bloody awful it is. And if you suffer from it, you know exactly what I mean. You can't get rid of it. No matter, people say you have it for seven years. You don't, you got it, you got it. It doesn't go away. I remember my dad having it as a kid. He never told me what it was. I, it was only when it started with me in my late, yeah, late, late twenties it started, maybe early thirties, and then it's just never left. Just got gradually worse over the years, but nothing I can do about it. Lots of people have it. And there's far worse. You know, I've got it. I've got it all over me. It's all over my back, my front, my legs, even my feet. Uh, on my backs of my head and places like that, it, it is what it is. You, you just can't get rid of it. And you can moisturize and moisturize and moisturize to try and hide the effects, but uh, it is what it is. If you've got it and you suffer from it, yeah, I feel your pain, buddy. It's not very nice, is it? So I see Camo Kutsi is uh, he's going to get into more into his fishing now. A um, little less blogging at home, more fishing. Um, I still owe you that lead, by the way. I've got, I've got some lead to send him. I, I keep meaning to do it, but just been flat out. I haven't had a chance yet. But I will send it to you, Camo, if you watch this vid. Uh, where we got? I watched the video this morning. Carpy Chris Dodd with his tracker bivvy. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. yeah, you didn't like that one too much, did you, Chris? <laughs>
I've watched uh, a few videos recently. I, I did purposely go to watch a few channels that um, that are quite new, and I, I've, I've gone out my way to watch those videos to see how they're getting on. Because uh, I know what it's like when you start a channel. You, you need support. You need backup. These bigger channels with multi multiple uh, tens of thousands of, of subscribers. They're okay, they're already in, but it's difficult to get going, it's difficult to get your name on the scene. And, uh, you know, I should know, I'm, I'm, like I say, I'm, I'm, I've not got very many myself, but... But I, I will support and help other channels if I can. And I think as long as a channel remains honest to itself, and doesn't just do it for the subs, and doesn't do it for the... Uh, for the sponsorship, then I think that's fair enough. Now, you know that I have got... It's not a sponsorship as such. I, I just get discount from a bait company if I use if I use there. So I, I do that. Which I don't mind because bait's expensive. And it is a, it's a bloody fortune. So if I can save myself a bit of money and use a, a decent quality bait in the, in the running too, then I'm more than happy with that. And to be honest, who wouldn't? So I did upload a picture earlier of me out here and I've had quite a good response from that from Facebook. So what I'm going to do, if you've commented up till now, we shake it, give you a shout out. So the first one in order as they appear, so no specific order, is going to be Lee Smith. We've got Liam Edwards, Nick Owen, John Hughes, Adam Smith. Kev Cook, totally irrelevant poster, Kev, but <laughs> thank you. Gary Cross, how you doing, mate? You okay? Long time no hear from you. Um, been down south fishing, and you didn't catch out. You must be gutted, mate. Gutted. Mark Pritchard. Kevin Booth. We know Kev. Simon Brown. Hi, Simon. I used to work with Simon in the last company I was with, and Trevor Bradford. So those guys have uh, commented on the video. Oh video commented on the uh, Facebook so thank you very much for commenting do appreciate that do you know the worst thing about Facebook it's getting so political isn't it if it keeps if Facebook continues the way it is now and it's just uploading political bollocks and I may have to get rid of it because it is it's not fun every time I turn it on now it's just depressing Fucking hell. what's this can we have a shout out to Matty and Steve Halsell? No, you can't. <laughs> Matty and Steve Halsell, how are you doing, guys? You alright? Fellow Northwest Carpers. Yeah, of course you can have a shout out. I hope you're well and I hope your fishing's good. Um, I seem to have fish all over me at the moment, guys, but doesn't seem to be doing much for me. <laughs> but it's not always about the fishing, is it? Yeah, there you go. There's your shout out. Paul Scott, you get one too. How you doing? Are you alright, Paul? <laughs> There's your shout out. Yes, I'm still sat in the same chair, still sat in the same place, still facing the same way. But yeah, you want a shout out? There's yours as well, Paul. Alright.
William Brothers Rubus Grapefruit IPA. And that will do nicely, thank you. Very similar to Elvis juice. I'm in. Okay, 14, 15. It is not by far the biggest fish ever. However, it doesn't have to be, does it? <laughs> Baby, come on. It doesn't have to be, does it? It just needs to be a nice fish. And that is a nice fish. It's 15, 14, whoops. <laughs> it's 14, 15 in the sling. So we'll knock a couple off for the sling. And even what, it, it doesn't matter. It's still a fish. And I'm over the moon with that. Let's get it back. And there she goes. <laughs> there you go. It was that it was that yellow zig, the shallow zig six inches below the surface. It got it right in the top lip. It was a cracking hook. Lovely little fish too. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm well over the moon with that. That has just made this 24 hours so much more better it didn't need to happen but i'm so glad it did yep look at this smile yep well chuffed why can't i do that on kellett <laughs> why is kellett so difficult for me oh another roll right there there's so many fish in this area i'm so confident but yeah, I am over the moon. And guess what? I was, I burned my tea in the process because that's what happens, isn't it? As soon as you start making your dinner, you catch a fish. Hey, I don't care. I've got burnt tea. Bring it on. Burn it again. Let's have another fish. <laughs> yeah, well chuffed. Well chuffed. Anyway, my dinner is nearly ready. Ow, 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 ow.
chicken tikka masala with naan breads and that smells oh that smells gorgeous it, you know you can, I, I, we say it quite often don't we you know you can have your pot noodles and everything but oh. use your imagination spend the time cook some dinner that is terrific that really is terrific and washed down with a IPA beer as well fish in the bag <laughs> does it get any better than that oh and the sun's shining the winds calm down happy bunny time I must admit when I seen the fish in this area and they were in this corner I was confident I was gonna get one but you can be overconfident, can't you? But I'm so glad it did. And I'm so glad it was that one as well. Because that was one of my deep zigs. And I changed it over into the shallow bay. And Harry was... Uh, H was watching um, on, on the blog. And he also commented, he said, go in that bay. And I was already in there with one. And I was in the process of moving another one. He said, yeah, you need to be in that bay. And I went, yeah, I'm on it, mate. I'm on it. Yeah. It's not about the size of the fish always. It's the experience. And I felt so rusty bringing that fish in. It's only been a few months, but I felt so rusty bringing that fish in. Hmm. I'm gonna have my dinner now. And when I've eaten, I'll get back to you. But I am well chuffed. With dinner out of the way, and one fish in the bag, I've changed personal tactics one more time. And I think, Flexibility is the key here. Don't get too comfortable just doing one thing all the time. I think you need to change things. So what I've done, I'm actually doubling up now. So um, yeah, I've got a tin of beer and a glass of bourbon. And I think that should help me achieve the aim a little bit more efficiently, I would say. I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. See, that's really nice. And so is that. <laughs> Just about here, there's a carp having big fun. Keeps leaving the surface, keeps boshing. Like, it's not a huge carp, but, but it's there, doing its thing. And I've been watching it for the last 10 minutes and I'm thinking, well, I should get it on camera, really. Chances are it's not going to show now because I've got the camera on it. Something just down here, right? <laughs> All the lads are up. We've seen something going on. Yeah, there's plenty of movement at the moment. Another thing I've done too is I've took all the bat leads off. And the reason I've done that, I want to see if they're still moving around. If, my, if I get liners, I know there's fish between me and my bait. So, you can watch your rod tips move, just bounce even, just a little tiny bounce or a nudge or a knock, and know it's a liner. And that's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting to see if the fish are still actually moving around. Or whether they've gone down to feed or... Or whatever well good morning don't know what <coughs> time it is actually um, uh, I just had a good night's sleep unfortunately I've rebated up in that area again and now I'm going to take in the 12 foot zig and I'm going to recast that back out as well that's what I'm doing next so let's get on with that shall we oh and I'm going to place on a 
uh, Hinders XO, um, which has been soaking in beetling for about a month. So that little pop up been going for 24 hours, just under 24 hours, and it's still working just fine. But do I need to change it? Probably not. But I'm going to put a bit of flavour out there on. Should have got my glasses really, because you can't really see. You can tell it's been soaking because it's much duller in, in colour. It's much duller. But this is the system I caught on previously. So let's get that out. And it's raining. We don't like rain, do we? But yeah, there's, there's my soaking baits. They've been in there for some time, soaking away in Beetlein. And it's, I'm not sure who that attracts, really. I think it's me. Yeah. I think it's me it's attracting, because I really do like the smell of that. Very sweet. So, I think it's time for a brew, make a brew and some breakfast. What shall I have this morning? Well, nothing amazing. I think I will have a tin of beans and sausages. <laughs> the old fashioned stuff, but we love it, don't we? Well, it's just coming up 8 o'clock. Breakfast is done. Um, I've got till lunchtime. A swan is over there currently nicking on my bait at the moment. I'm just worried that it's going to get that shallow zig and then I'm going to have a swan on my hands. Well, that would be my luck. So, nice brew. Breakfast and a swan. There you go. Yeah, he's just had a good feed now look, of all my bait. There you go. He's, yeah, he's had a good feed, so I think I'll have a bit of a prune. Get. But at least he's heading away from my zig. Keep going, you little shite. Just need them to kick off. Well, thankfully the rain stopped now. A couple of lads came round earlier, had a walk round, asked how I got on. They'd been here a couple of days, I think, and they'd not had anything. They were on the corner, the ones that I showed earlier, the lads that were on the corner there, just on as the lake goes around the corner. So, unfortunately, they've not had anything. So I don't think many people's caught on this lake this weekend. So 
So I may have one of the few fish that have come out. Which is good. The fish are still showing. They're still topping, surfacing. I mean the lads came around and said that they'd not see beep on the middle rod. That could be a liner because I've got no bat leads on. I always remember a chap making a solid PVA bag and I was watching him making it and I was very new to carp fishing and I, as I was watching him do this I thought shouldn't his line be inside that and I think what he'd done he'd actually forgot to put his line and weight and hook bait in so rather than lose face in front of me he picked his rod up hooked his PVA, solid PVA bag through and then cast it into the water <laughs> well everything went down didn't it, everything went into the water but the PVA bag stayed on the surface the hook teared out of the bag and they just sat there for a minute and then it melted and then it just dropped into <laughs> the water rather than saying oh because I've been talking to you look I've not put that in I thought he'd bluff it <laughs> and it failed but I must admit I've, I've done a similar thing Maybe made up with PVA bags thinking yeah look at me made all my PVA bags up ready for the weekend and then realise I've got nothing in them <laughs> I mean I don't think there's a person amongst us who who's never had an epic fail I guess one of my favourite ones would have to be the bait boat I was on a pond we used to call it the death pit because you, you, you could be there for a bloody weeks and never catch anything like there was nothing in it but there was there was there was before the otters got it, it was some good fish in it anyway we caught it at the death pit and there was this lad that came along and I had, I had this brand new bait boat to me and I was just practicing with it and this little lake was an ideal situation to to practice with it because there's nobody about there's only two people on the lake and I wasn't going to disturb anybody only only me and uh, well consequently this guy turned up and said, oh yeah, oh, I've not seen one of them, oh that looks good, that looks, yeah, and I was really giving it, all oh, the thumbs up and really giving it some. <laughs> and then I pushed this bait boat out, I didn't turn it on, and it just sat in the middle of the lake for ages, because I couldn't do anything with it. <laughs> I went, yeah, that's not right, mate. So in the end, I had to wait for the wind to come around and, and blow it back. But yeah, that was... That was quite embarrassing. That was a proper fail. This bait boat just sat there in the middle of the lake and I, and I, I couldn't get it back. <laughs> so here's the script. What's been happening is I've, this middle, this left hand rod that I've had, I was convinced in my head that it was 15 foot water. It's actually 19 where I've been fishing. So I've been fishing quite, I've been pushing, my, my zig's been 10, nearly 10 foot underwater. Um, so um, I've been miles away from the fish and I didn't realise until now. I've just seen some fish surface over there. Everybody's cleared off on the far bank. So I've got all this entire water to fish now, in my mind. So I thought I'd just get the map out and have a look and see what depth it is. And I've just realised that I've been fishing too deep on my left hand rod, hence no knocks. So what I'm going to do now, now I've got the ability to, I'm going to cast right over in between those other two pegs there and those reeds in the distance and it is actually gets a little bit shallow it gets to 15 and it gets to 14 and then it starts to rise up pretty sharp so I'm gonna get right out there in the distance and that's where I'm gonna fish for the last couple hours over there because there's been movement there all weekend this lad's not used it he's not fished into it the two that were there earlier have left so it's been open water and I've been unable to fish it because Really, that lad could have fished it and it had been too close to him, but... So now he's gone, I'm gonna, I'm gonna nick that space. So I've just reeled in now and I'm gonna cast over to it. Yeah. 
right over to the other bank now. So if you look here, I'm 10, I've been fishing here, been a bit deep. So what I've done now, I've pushed right over to where this line is here. So 10, 11 foot, 13 foot of water. So my zig should be perfectly just on the top of the surface, right over there. And I've been fishing in here and I've been too deep. That's my own fault for not checking earlier. So yeah, I should have, I should have checked. I've been fishing far, far too deep, probably in 18 foot of water. There you go. Not to worry. At least I know they weren't down there. <laughs> my confidence is beginning to fade, despite all the signs showing boshing, feeding, fizzing, everything that I've seen this morning. My efforts have so far prevail not prevailed. Uh, so I will. I've got about 40 minutes left. Uh, everything's dry now. So I will start to pack things away into the car, but yeah, I'm a little disappointed to, to be honest. I, I really thought I was on the, on the money this morning. I really did think I was on the money and I really had the confidence to think that I was going to get one out. And for all those people that are, are blanking out there right now, like I usually do on Kelly, it's not that you've blanked you've just simply run out of time. You would have got your fish, but you've got to go to work. And I hope the next time, I hope the next time that anything like this ever happens again, the government might realize that this type of industry is 100% not a social thing. You can make it a social, we often do. By definition itself, it's not a social. It's not a social thing. Yep, they're gonna balls it up for me. I think I nearly just caught this one. Just to finish the shout out list, we have, I think I left it at Nigel Brankley last night. So Nigel Brankley about the brew dogs, yep. I'm, I'm sure I answered him. Tony Hind, yep. Kevin Farrell, Andy Timms, my brother. How you doing, bro? You okay? Um, Chris Holt, Carl Levis. Guys, thank you everyone for commenting on my a Facebook page. I hope I've covered everybody on a shout out. So there you go. Even Carl, last one 20 minutes ago. So there you go, Carl, just in the nick of time. So thank you very much.
thank you for joining me. If you're still with me at the end of this waffling video, then I appreciate it. Thank you for spending the 24 hours in my company and it was great fun for me. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, thank you very much. Thank you for your support and we'll see you in the next one. And where is the next one? Well, I'm trying to book this morning now another two, two days here on the 20th of this month. We'll try, um, Dave wants to come. Paul has uh, got an overnight here, so we're going to meet up with Paul and have a few beers on the bank, perhaps. Obviously, social distancing. But um, yeah, that'll be the 20th. And then I say we've got another social booked up. Hopefully, we'll get that sorted. And my next big, big fishing session is France in October. So there'll be a few weekenders, maybe a five day coming up in August and after that it's going to be October which will be France and that should be a cracker that will be Andy and Dave and myself so until then guys thank you very much for joining me see you next time bye bye